Welcome! I'm Yuan Nielsen. And I'm Lincoln Murphy. And this is Impact Weekly. We're here to help you make your customers successful. Each week, we answer your most pressing customer success management questions by relying on our years of experience with companies around the world. Let's get this going. Hey everyone, welcome back to Impact Weekly. Another day, another question. This one is uh, interesting. Uh, It's actually something I've been discussing uh, last couple of weeks with several different people. Um, So here it goes. I would love to get your view on Jason Lemkin's assessment that customer success is moving from the customer's ally to its nemesis. Hmm. Um, so this, I, we need to, of course, br- uh, give everyone the background here because this, um, of, most of you may ha- have not seen this already, but it was a blog post. It was actually a tweet from Jason Lemkin, who is, um, yeah, the, the founder about, behind Saster, one of the, the, this big SaaS event. And he basically wrote a blog article where he said that customer success is uh, has gone from the customer's ally to its nemesis. And I think he used an example here uh, where he basically gave some feedback to one of his vendors and he gave honest, tough, rough feedback. And what he got back from this vendor was an automated response from the VP of customer success and a price increase. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think a great question, and uh, this is what this is what I'm going to dig into today. Uh, what's your take first? First off, uh, on this Lincoln. <laughs> well, it's interesting. Um, reading the tweet uh, where he says that I gave um, honest, tough, rough feedback, and then was sent a price increase. Um, you know, my first <laughs> my first thought was, how rough was the feedback? Maybe they were oh, yeah. trying to get rid of you. <laughs> Yes. Um, you know, maybe this isn't a, a, you know, customer success is going downhill as much as they don't want, um, they don't want you as a customer, but I think, uh, the rest, the article that, um, that sort of accompanied the tweet or was built around the tweet. Yeah. Uh, it does, it does bring up some really interesting, um, things that are happening out there. Yes. We are seeing a lot of things happening under the customer success, um, umbrella or, or, or people with a customer success mm. title yeah. doing things that are not, <laughs> they're not, they're not customer success. And the things Definitely. that he describes in, in the, in his blog post, um, the examples that he gives the, they're just not customer success. Um, yeah. we'll talk about what those are in a second and give some yeah. examples, but I think the really interesting th- sort of thing that he presents Mm. is this idea of customer success just in general becoming uh, the customer's ally or its nemesis. Yeah. And I, I do think there's, there's some, some real, there's some merit uh, to discussing that. And there's, yeah. there's some real um, legitimate issues that are happening where we are seeing in some cases, uh, but this, this isn't just happening in recent times. This has happened pretty much forever in terms of customer yeah. success. Some late, some pressures lately may, may be bringing a lot more of this to the surface, but yeah. um, I think this but, whole ally versus nemesis thing is really interesting and we should dig into that. Yeah. No, but I think you're right. There's, I think what's bringing attention to this right now is that we've seen quite good times, uh, several years of really good times for SaaS in general. And we're, Probably a lot of companies have, yeah, set up the mismanaged how they set up their customer success, and they've been focusing much more on these short, short-minded sales uh, focus. And and now when we're hitting a more of a downturn, uh, basically um, we see we see a lot of pressure on these companies that have been 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 doing it from the with the with the wrong intentions basically so Mm -hmm. i think that's why this is really a good topic right now when i discussed this specifically this actual blogger article and this tweet with several different leaders in customer success uh just recently were uh, so i think it's a it touches on a nerve that's really relevant right now and i think that's why 
it's great to get these kind of questions to the pod as well. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love it. But let's dig into agree with you as well. Let's start with this ally versus nemesis. I think it's a good way to, yeah, to, to look at the, the two different the different sides here and what we mean. So maybe we should. What what, yeah. what is an ally? Maybe let's well, start with that one. Yeah, I mean, I think we're we're gonna do what we what we do best. I think, which is define things. You know, like we, we come up, yeah. with, we always come up with with definitions. But I think in order to kind of figure out if you're operating as one or the other, um, if if this is something that's you know how this applies to your organization and that kind of stuff, we do need to have a definition. So um, I think if we look at an ally, really, this is. This is, and I, I really, I, I like this term actually a lot. Oh yeah. Um, and, and so if we're the, the ally of the customer, then in the context of um, the, the article where he talks a lot about price increases or um, trying to upsell the customer and that CS mm-hmm. has become the, the nemesis because all it is, is just um, an arm of sales. It's just basically uh, sales enablement. Or, or something like that, uh, you know, teeing up leads for sales to work and that kind of thing. And so in his, you know, his assertion is that that's more, you know, behavior of, of, a, of a customer nemesis than, than that of an ally. And so I think in the context of expansion, because yes. so we'll talk about it really from that standpoint, in the context of expansion, as an ally, if you, you would be putting in front of the customer what they need in order to succeed. Mm. And that may be something that, you know, a product or a service that they don't currently pay for, that it's something that they would have to add to their account. Right. That is the behavior of an ally, putting in front of the customer what they need when they need it. And I would just say, and this is sort of outside the scope of, of, of this discussion, but, you know, if we, we have, and we've talked about this in other episodes, but where, um, some customer success organizations go the other direction, right? And they don't want to be commercial at all. And so they don't want to put any expansion opportunities in front of the customer because they don't want to hurt trust. But to me, you're not being an ally in that case, right? Because you're not putting in front of the customer the the thing that they need to succeed. And then that would also be just putting in front of the customer what they need to succeed, that whether that's, you know, things that they'll need to purchase in addition to what they already have, or just putting in front of them what they already have, you know, that they've yeah. already purchased. But in, in, the, in the context of expansion, it's making sure that, that they have what they need to succeed. And then the, uh, the, the nemesis yes. would be trying to push products and services on, on your customers, whether they need it or not. Right. So, you know, wrong, wrong product, wrong time, um, that kind of thing. And that's, that's when you are, in, that's when you're, that's when you are doing, things that are anti-customer that's exactly. that's being focused on you being focused on on your short-term results that you need to hit and and things like that are going to hurt trust with the customer because yeah they're it's not what they need and so um an ally an ally helps a customer I think succeed that's, uh, a nemesis doesn't uh, but it's really important distinction there i mean and and also i think what you, to high, to underline what you said there lincoln as well because i think in the article uh jason argues that maybe we should even remove expansion as a measurement for customer success and and i think that's just uh, a consequence of these uh poorly operated customer success experiences that he has been <laughs> been on the receiving end of right so right. Um, we believe, I mean, expansion is crucial uh, part of, of customer success. And as you mentioned there, uh, if you do it correctly, it will be, it will actually improve the relationship and it will help the customer get even more out, hit more goals with, with your product. So yeah, I think it's I, important to mention. I mean, and I want to be really clear when we talk about this stuff, ultimately we're in business. We're, we're you know, we're, we're all, both yes. the, us, the, the vendor and the customer are, are businesses usually, at least in a B2B setting. And, uh, you know, oftentimes we both have profit motive and, and there's nothing wrong with this. And, and we, we are all aware that we're in a commercial relationship. And, and I just think 
that needs to be something that is is just clear and obvious and not something we try to run away from or, or hide from. Um, and so, you know, if we understand, if that's just sort of table stakes, that's just, that's just what exists, then, yeah. then we need to, from there, understand that as customers succeed and, and grow and reach their goals, that they are going to evolve they're going Mm. to change, they're going to grow. And where it makes logical sense, their relationship with us should grow and evolve as well. And so the, the side effect of this, this way of thinking about customer success that that we, that that we promote, yes, the side effect is growth. The side effect is more revenue. The side effect is, is better NRR, but the approach is yes. customer centric. And so that's why in, in some ways, mm. I mean, I, I think it, I think his article was, was useful to bring this up as a conversation point, but he sort of presents a false dichotomy, a false decision, which is to say, um, you can either have customer success or you can have expansion. You can't mm. have both. And I, yeah. I think that that's just, that's, that's wrong. And yeah. if it was anybody yeah. else, I would say that's, that's just a, you know, that's just one person's opinion. Unfortunately, Jason Lincoln is a, people listen to him. And yes. so I worry that this, that this kind of thing, when he says that can make make some people go, oh my gosh, okay. Um, we need to stop, you know, trying to expand our customers. It's like, no, I think if you read the post, it's kind of just chaotic. It feels like it was just an emotional response to a bad experience. Um, so, you know, Please don't. I, I would encourage you not to just no. make a, a, a wild strategic decision uh, based off of that. But it, again, I think it's an interesting catalyst for this discussion. But Definitely. customer success driven growth, that mm. is growth that is tied to the customer's actual success, mm. is the most sustainable yes. um, and, and repeatable type of growth and, and can lead to exponential growth in account value. And, and like, that's, it's, it's pretty fantastic. (laughs) So, um, but there are no shortcuts. And so if you try to, you know, try to force product and services onto your customers when they don't need them, try to be that nemesis, like that's not going to have the long-term positive effect that you're looking for. In fact, the thing that I always say is, you know, short-term thinking has long-term consequences. And so, um, that's, that this is an example of that. That he um, saw. Let's let's maybe stay stop there as well and, and talk about a little bit why I mean of course no one sets out to become the customer's nemesis right <laughs> they won't put that on their on their website at least yeah. they won't talk about that so why do why do companies end up getting there uh, becoming more short term and, and sales focused um, so I think that's important to bring up here as well okay, I think. Um, I, I, one part of this problem, I, I believe, is there's a lag here as well. That I think a lot of people who've been more short term, been more doing what not the type of customer success we promote, uh, they are now feeling some pains, right? They've been right. maybe in the in the better times they, they could expand, they could do more upgrades on customers that weren't ready or or didn't need it, and so on. And now, uh, when when it's a bit tougher market, um, they are are hit with uh, an increase in churn, and and this short term uh, focus on on uh, expansion. Maybe they haven't been doing the the work on the customers that were not doing well, so they have an increase. And so, mm-hmm. I think it's a it, it can spiral, right? The, the, the situation. Oh, for sure. And you said it. I think you said it well when you said it's a, it's a lag, and mm. I think what we're seeing in a lot of cases is there was a lot of, so to your point, like there was a lot of short term thinking in, in the earlier sales cycles. Yes. And times were good thing. People were buying stuff like it. You could not only could you be sort of short term focused on just selling anything to anybody, regardless of their success potential. Um, the cust- you know, the customers were there and they were buying and, and like, you weren't getting a lot of resistance. And so that's exactly. great. And yes. then, you know, there might've even, you know, 
who knows, there might've been some, some different motivations on the customer side. They were able to work through, um, you know, even your poor onboarding processes, you know, your, your, your lack of customer centric, um, engagement and then yes. times got kind of tough and they had, they felt they started feeling some pressures and they started kind of stressing out and weren't able to continue to operate with, with the lack of, uh, of engagement from your mm-hmm. team. And yeah. now they want to churn because they're not getting as much value or they never got any real value from you or, or yeah, they never got any value initially. And now they're trying to look for, for places to cut costs. And since they're yeah. not getting any value from your product, um, you know, you're at the, you're, you're on, on the, the top of the chopping block. Exactly. And so uh, now you're having to deal with those, those short-term uh, that short-term thinking initially. And so now we have these, these stressors exactly. that are going to cause even more short-term thinking. Yes. So, you know, it's a really interesting thing. Like, what do you, what do you do when, when you are in a stressful situation, um, you, you tend to fall back on the things that you know. Hmm. And uh, I mean, that's just, that's just how it works. That's why uh, we want to, you know, if you're, if you're training for survival in the wilderness, you want to actually train on things that will work because in the moment you might not have a lot of mental bandwidth to, to, to come up with new hmm. ideas. You, you know, you need to fall back on the things that are going to actually keep you alive. Well, in a stressful situation from a customer success standpoint, if you don't know what works, um, you might fall back on bad habits and, and, you know, just things that aren't going to be successful. And so, um, when, when your leadership comes to you as a head of customer success and says, uh, we need this much new revenue from our existing Mm. customers. And you say, I don't know, I don't, I don't know how to do that. Mm. So when they say, well, here's a list of customers or, or here's a, here's an offer to blast to, to the customers or mm. you, you say, okay. Right. And then, and then you blast that out or, or you just say, well, let's just raise prices, you know, 10% mm. or 20%. Oh, yeah. And so we just do these things that maybe they worked in the past. Mm. People were okay with it. You know, we only had 25, 30% churn when we did that, mm. <laughs> you know, whatever, like, yeah. this, which is bad by the way, I'm joking. Yeah. But like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> We, but we, we've done these things in the past and they worked, quote unquote, worked okay. And so we, we do it again Yes. rather than saying, all right, hold up. I know we have some pressures here. What is a, what is a way for us to do this that would allow us to still maintain that, that position as an ally? Exactly. What would be customer centric here? Yes. And, you know, if, but if you don't know what those things are, it's going to be difficult for you to, to, to implement them when you're feeling that stress and pressure. So this is why mm-hmm. when we talk about, so, you know, in our training in Impact Academy, one of the reasons we want people to be uh, well-trained mm-hmm. is so when they, when, because we recognize that not, you know, it's not always just fun and games out there, right? A lot of times we are in stressful situations and I want the CSMs that we train. I want the heads of customer success that we train to be able to act appropriately under stress that, Mm. that, that what they've been trained on comes to the surface and they're able to make the right decisions in this case, making decisions that are right for the customer. So this is both a result of, short-term thinking that happened in, you know, it, when we, when we brought in customers that maybe we mm-hmm. shouldn't have, or we brought them in, in a way that that was not ideal. So they didn't mm-hmm. go through a good onboarding process. They didn't go through proper adoption, et cetera. Um, or, and, or, and it's probably both. We are now in a, in a position to react yeah. to these new stressors, but we don't have the customer centric uh, ally way of doing things. So we just default to either what, uh, what we know or, or, or what maybe somebody from sales says, Hey, try this. Or somebody from mm. marketing says, Hey, here's a growth hack. Try this. Mm. And we say, okay. Mm. Oh, <laughs> and no. yeah. you know, um, it, it doesn't, 
it doesn't work out so well. So, um, yeah, we have, we have to, we have to know what to do, I guess. is my Yeah, point. definitely. And I think that's probably where we should, we should, uh, we should get into that as well to, for anyone who is now a little bit uncertain, are you, are you more on the ally side or you're more on the nemesis side? Um, uh, how do I know that? And what, sh- how do I, how do I take the right actions if I'm, of course, if I'm an ally side, I'm fine. I'm 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 doing good. But if I'm if I feel that we're moving towards the nemesis side of things, uh, how do I fix that? Yeah. Well, um, I wanted to say in um, in Jason's uh, in his blog post, there were there were several mentions of of price increases in in, mm. in this tweet, oh, yeah. right? Yes. So um, we we covered in episode nine of Impact Weekly. We actually covered communicating price increases oh, yeah. um, as a CSM. So if, if that's something you are being tasked with, you know, so, so the, the short term uh, idea here to get more revenue is let's raise prices and you're oh, yeah. being tasked with communicating that go listen to episode nine. Cause we talk about that in a lot of detail. Um, yeah. But, but just in general, um, yeah. <laughs> like that's See, a, it can- <laughs> It can be kind of like a perfect storm right now. You have a downturn in the market. You have been selling the wrong things, pushing the wrong things, working short term. And now you're trying to price increase and you have this short term way of doing things. So, yeah, it can be a lot of stress. (laughs) Good luck. Yes, yes. But we're here for you. Yeah, we we have some advice in the end here for you. But uh, yeah, um, I think uh, I think there, there can be a lot of pressure out there at the moment. For sure, this is not ideal. Uh, that's not an <laughs> ideal environment, no. Obviously, and 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 then having to um, having to navigate this as a CSM, and like you said, we'll, we'll give you some some ideas here in a second. But um, I think you know, again, what you want to do is is sort of check yourself before you wreck yourself, and and look to see if you are are acting as a nemesis or acting as an ally. Like that's a check that you want to run frequently, um, both as a head of customer success and as a CSM. And, and again, you know, are you putting in front of the customer things that they need when they need it? Or are you just trying to get anything and everything you can out of any customer that would, that will talk to you about, uh, about a product and, or, you know, about an, an upsell or, or, or whatever. And, you know, I, I think there are times where, um, there are times where a, a you know, maybe a cu- one customer will, will take you up on a random offer that, that was sent to them. Um, and you might say, Oh, that's, that's fantastic. Um, I got, we got, we got, we got one, but you know, it's like, how many customers did you burn in the process? You know, how many customers did you, oh, yeah. did you or someone from your company blast an, an offer to who, you know, was like, where's this coming from? You know, I'm, I'm having these issues or, you know, I'm still going mm. through onboarding yeah. or, you know, whatever. And it's like, and how many, how many times do we hear from CSMs? We hear this all the time in, in impact Academy training from CSMs, but I hear this just from the companies that I work with CSMs that I talk to, they'll say, you know, a customer emailed me or forwarded me an email from mm. our sales team with, with like, why, why is your salesperson mm. contacting me? You know, it's just, it, it happens, you know, all the time. And so we want to make sure that um, we as a company are acting as an ally, but also just monitor your yeah. own behavior is, is something. And then I think we need to talk about a couple of things that you can do both as mm. a head of customer success uh, and as a CSM. Um, do you want to yeah. take the, the head of customer success? Yeah. No, but uh, for sure. I mean... If you if you sense that you're heading toward the nemesis side of things, I mean you you need to be the voice of the whole customer success organization, and you need to explain to your leadership team basically why 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 this way of doing things will hurt your hurt the company, and the better you can um, bring numbers into this discussion. Um, to make it more um, about the business side, explain it in that way, 
I think that will help you. You need to advocate for the whole customer success organization. You need to advocate for your customers and uh, bring up some examples, some concrete scenarios from your customers. Bring it, bring back the numbers behind it. And uh, you need to bring elevate that discussion basically to the leadership team. Yeah, and I think your your, your point about numbers is is really critical. Um, you know, we can't oh, yeah. talk about customer satisfaction or happiness or anything like that, uh, especially when you're pushing back on you know uh, mandated behaviors <laughs> mm. uh, or or, yeah. or or you know results that need to be met. Um, we need to speak to the, the, those results. We need to speak to the numbers and, um, and, and usually, you know, it's, it's fairly easy to see how some, some short-term tactics could have long-term, uh, negative consequences. But I also want to just point out real quick that it's the things that we talk about in terms of customer driven growth. Uh, so really, you know, expansion tied to the customer's progress. This is not the this is not just the the long play here. There are things that when you understand the customer's actual progress, um, you, you probably have a cohort of customers right now that would accept a you know some sort of a, an expansion opportunity because they are positioned for that right now. Now, you're not going to get as a bit right. big of an uptake if you've been able to orchestrate that, you know, last quarter or a couple quarters ago so that they had time to plan and, and that kind of thing. But mm. there is a cohort of customers right now that if you if you understood their actual progress, where they're at, um, and understood what the logical expansion opportunity was for them, that you could present something to them right now and they would take it. Yeah. And that would that would help you hit your numbers. But you have, you know, that ha you have to approach it from that that perspective, and yeah. again, under under stress and under pressure, it's just easier, or, or you know, we just default to the things that we've done in the past, which might have been just blasting our entire customer base with an offer, or just blanket raising the mm -hmm. price ten or twenty percent, and accepting whatever churn that might come along with that. Anyway. You know, I, I think it's just we, yeah. it's another false, false dichotomy, another false decision yeah. of it's either short term sales tactics or long term customer success tactics. And I don't I don't no. think that's the case. You know, it can be there. Can, there can be some short term customer centric tactics that we can employ anyway. So that's yeah. so yeah. everything you said about head to customer that's success approach is, is valid. Yeah, right. So just following that also, of course, if you're a customer success manager working in an environment becoming more of a, like a nemesis to your customers, I think the steps there would be to, to raise your concern to your head of customer success. And hopefully he or she will bring that up uh, as we talked about just a minute ago. Uh, I mean, I think that's what you can do as a customer success manager if you, if you sense that this is going the wrong way. Uh, of course, the other option there would be also to see to seek another. I mean, if you want to do real customer success, and, and uh, of course <laughs> that's very far from being a nemesis to your customer, then you should probably look at the other uh, other areas or, or other companies to work for, basically. Yeah, I mean, look, yeah, if you communicate it to your to your head of CS, and yeah. they basically, you know, don't seem concerned with it, that you're being set up to to be positioned as a nemesis to your customer. Um, that is an environment you probably are not going to be thriving in. Uh, and you probably should find another environment to work. That's just not, it's not fair to you. It's not fair no. to you to be, to put, be put in that position. So I, I, I think yeah. that's valid. All right. So we've talked about a lot of different things. Uh, yes. We always want to boil it down to three very practical things that, that yeah. we can do here. So um, let me, I'll take the first one. Yes. Uh, the first thing that you, you can, you can, and should do is again, check yourself as you go along. Are you acting as an ally or are you acting as a nemesis? And I want to be really, really clear here. Judge that based on your actions and not just the way you talk about things, because mm, it's easy right. to, to talk about things and make it seem like we're acting in our customer's best interest. But our actions maybe 
they maybe they aren't actually doing that. So check yourself. Are you acting as an ally or a nemesis? Great. And then following that, number two here, if you if you're being pushed to the nemesis side of things by your leadership, you need to raise concerns here, as we just mentioned. Very important. And I, I will finish here with the last thing here is that if you want to build a customer success as an ally to your customers, join our Impact Academy because that's what that's all about. I think that's exactly what we want to do. We talked about what, what we mean by an ally and, and here you will get all the training, all the tools to, to do that. So that's our last recommendation for today. And um, we all, we'll be back soon with another question. So thanks for listening and see you soon. Hey, thanks for listening. Do you want to bring your customer success to the next level? Check out Impact Academy. We have training programs for customer success managers and for leaders in customer success.